Good morning and welcome to another Bible study here at Hurricane Baptist Church. As we study the uh, gift of tongues, we've been talking about it the last week or uh, last couple of days, and uh, we'll continue that study. It's all about the gifts of the Spirit and how the Holy Spirit gives these gifts for the validation of the apostles and those that use these gifts back in that uh, day and time, especially in the book of Acts as we talk about it. So uh, we've talked about uh, different views about tongues. Uh, some believe that uh, it's all, many times tongues is mentioned, it's all known. Others believe uh, a known language. Others believe that it's all uh, ecstatic language all the time. And then there's those that believe it's both. It's one time it's uh, ecstatic language, other time it's known. Uh, so, and they use the idea that it's used, the word is used different at different times. But uh, as uh, Dr. Walford uh, wrote, uh, it's, it doesn't change the fact he goes with the known language aspect of it. So, but we're going to look at the purpose of tongues now, and uh, we're going to look at the, uh, the negative purpose. It was not for church edification. Um, it says over in uh, 1 Corinthians 14, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue. Again, when we, I uh, just want to remind you that when we look at the word unknown, now this this is all out of the King James, and that's what we preach and teach out of it, but it's in the italics when it's in the, in the Bible, so we know that it's been added. So uh, again, it's one of those things that's supposed to be for clarification, but uh, I don't know if it don't lend a little more to confusion. But he says, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that speaketh, uh, prophesieth rather, edifieth the church. Yet in church, in the church, I had rather speak five words with my understanding that my voice that my, by my voice I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. So that's Paul talking. It's not for church edification, okay? It was probably not for the personal edification either, although then in verse 4 we read it, uh, uh, he says that he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. But again, we get over to uh, verse 23 in that same chapter, it looks like he might be kind of rebuking them for unscriptural use of that gift. So. Uh, when we, when we study the scripture again, we have to. We can't just grab a verse here and grab. We got to take the context. What is the writer talking about? What's the point? What's the context? All those things go together. So uh, we need to. When talking about tongues, we look at chapter 13, chapter 14. Uh, basically, that's where we see the the uh, doctrinal issue with it. Uh, we see Paul bringing it out. Um, we see another, another again the negative aspect of it. So it's not for the personal. It's not for personal edification. It's not uh, talked about this a little bit the other day. It's not to demonstrate either salvation or spirit baptism. Okay, so it's, it has nothing to do with that. But we read over in First Corinthians 12:13, for by one spirit we are all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. So it it's. Uh, it's not to demonstrate, it's, it's salvation. Again, it has nothing to do, um, I'm going to be careful how I say this, but you're saved uh, in that day and time, you could have the gift. You might have the gift in that day and time. But it was not an indication uh, today of a salvation or spirit baptism. It's not that. So that's the negative aspect. Now, the positive side of it, uh, again, it was to reassure. Um, it was a sign gift. It was to validate both the messenger and the message. Again, it's the reassured. We saw, we read about that over in, in Pentecost and, and uh, a couple other places in the scripture at, at Ephesus where I was, the tongues were evident. It was to reassure, it was to rebuke. Uh, it says, In the law it is written with men of other tongues and other lips, I will speak unto this people. And yet for all that will they not hear me, saith the Lord, where tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. Okay. Tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying serve not for them that believe, but for them which believe believe not. But which, let me get it again, okay? But prophesying serve not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. I'll get it straight here. So that's again, that's over in First Corinthians 14, 21 and 22. So if I confuse you there, uh, you can look it right up there. So uh, that uh, there's uh, an Old Testament. Um, answer to that what he's talking about that to believe and to believe not and it has to do with a, a judgment on uh, Israel the northern ten tribes went into captivity by the Assyrians uh, Judah and Benjamin the southern, uh, the southern tribes were uh, 
going to be under the same judgment if they didn't correct themselves, if they didn't get their act together. Uh, he said that you're going to, the same thing's going to happen to you. You're going to be taken into captivity. You're going to be at a hall away while well, they didn't listen. So uh, there was a day coming that they were. So uh, God spoke to them through the Assyrians. They spoke it in that, in that tongue, in that unknown tongue. And we can get all into that. And that's uh, something for you to look up sometime. But uh, God said to uh, Judah through Isaiah, since I cannot reach you in the Hebrew language, I will nevertheless command your attention when through the mouth of the enemy soldier. So uh, I'm going to speak to you in the Assyrian and the Babylon, Babylonian language. Uh, you see how that, all, how that all went together and how they failed to listen and how God brought judgment on Judah and uh, Benjamin. Judah we're talking about Jerusalem and, and that area and they took them into captivity by the Babylonians. Uh, it's also to reveal when Paul wrote 1 Corinthians, at chapter 14, at that time, there were only four books of the Bible written. Uh, the New Testament, excuse me, not the Bible, but the New Testament. Uh, James, Galatians, and First of Things, Thessalonians. Um, we read over Second Timothy 3, 16 and 17. You know, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. We read that. Well, that hadn't been written yet. All they had was those four books. So what it did, uh, uh, the church, the doctrine of the church, um, the doctrine of justification, sanctification, glorification, that was in Romans apostasy, a question of forgiveness, priesthood, life of the Christ. The four Gospels weren't written yet. Uh, none of this was all written. Uh, see, all this was come to, uh, coming to pass. So we have this that uh, it was to, to reveal, the tongues was used to, to reveal uh, what God was uh, wanting to happen, to reveal the, the truth to us. Uh, general facts about tongues. Uh, speaking in a known tongue helps all, it says in 1 Corinthians 14.3. But he that prophesied speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. So uh, when they when they're prophesying the fourth telling, not the fourth telling, but the fourth telling, the teaching, and that it speaketh unto edification, exhortation, and to lift us up. Uh, that's what the word of God's for. And so we see that the tongues were used for that. Uh, speaking in tongues helps no Christian in the church. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesieth edifieth the church. So we talked about self-edification. The, 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 the gifts are not for personal edification. Okay, the gifts are to validate the person and the, the message and the messenger, as we said. But it's not for the person. Look at me. Look what I can do. Uh, I have the gift of tongues, and I can get up and talk and talk and talk. No, that's not what it was for. Uh, uh, he says it's like a musical instrument. It's useless and heard and distinctly understood. He says in the First Corinthians fourteen seven. And even things without life-giving sound, whether pipe or harp, except they give a distinction in sounds, how shall it be known what is piped or harp? In other words, unless the sound is recognizable, it's of no value. Uh, they, they would sound the trumpet when they, the trumpet when they wanted to come together for an assembly, to get together for assembly, or they would sound the trumpet for a different trumpet for the enemies coming, get ready for the attack, get ready to defend yourself. So you had to understand what the what the instrument, what the trumpet meant. And, uh, same with the instruments. If, uh, if the uh, harp is being played, if you can't understand the tune, what good is it? If you can't understand the tune and that. So he says here that uh, uh, it has to be distinct. You have to understand it. Uh, Paul said to have spoken in tongues. We see that he's done that. Um, he says, have all gifts of healing. Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? In 1 Corinthians 12, 30, wherefore, brethren, covet, covet to prophesy and forbid not to speak with tongues. And then we see that uh, uh, there, there is that, again, he's got a note here uh, that uh, the teaching day that all Christians should be able to speak in tongues. If you're born again, you should be able to speak in tongues. That is not true. It's not a, it's not a sanctification or salvation. Salvation is it's not to get you saved, to show you saved, and it's not to help you grow in your faith. That's not what the purpose of it is. So it's not for uh, salvation or sanctification. Uh, we talked about uh, foretelling and, and foretelling. Foretelling is, is the future, what's going to happen down the road. And foretelling is explaining the scripture, taking the word of God and uh, teaching with it. So um, let's see, uh, they had some regulations concerning tongues. Um, everybody uh, says, if therefore the whole church be come together and went to one place and all speak with tongues and they're coming, those that are unlearned or unbelievers, will they not say, that you're mad if everybody's up just ranting and raving in tongues. If uh, back in that day and time, if they were all speaking in tongues, uh, just to confusion. Uh, preaching, 
not tongues is God's method of saving people. That's what it is. It's the preaching, the proclaiming of the Word of God. Uh, it's limited in number. Uh, go a little bit further here. Um, women were absolutely forbidden to speak in tongues. It says, uh, let your women uh, keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. Uh, but um, we know that in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, he talks about women praying and, and offering prophecies in the local church. So what he's saying here is, women, you don't speak in tongues. Okay, he's not saying they can't speak, but you don't speak in tongues. And when the last thing we'll close up with this is all things are to be done decently and in order, no matter what it is. You don't want confusion. You don't want to, everything to go into chaos. Everything should be done decently in order, no matter what it is in the church. Uh, they're talking about tongues here, but no matter what it is, and no, any disagreements, uh, dissension within the body is to be taken care of in an orderly fashion to the glory of God. So we'll go ahead and talk a little bit more. We'll finish up this uh, study tomorrow about uh, tongues. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do just thank you for this time that we can come together. And as we study this gift, uh, it's uh, hard to explain sometimes, Lord. It's hard to understand. And so we just pray you be with us as we uh, share the Bible, share your word. And, and we pray that those uh, listening can understand and will discern and, and that we can rightly divide your word. We just thank you for loving us. We thank you for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen.